we have another question uh, by Egbert. Um, was Maria Magdalena really psychotic? Because she was hearing clouds talking to her in a revelation, thinking it was Jesus. So this is a very interesting question. This is a very good question. So Mary Magdala, she's a very curious feature, uh, character. And the question is, was she psychotic? So this is a very intriguing question. So what I'll share with you is what I think. I'm not sure of this, but this is what seems to have happened. So Mary Magdalene is mentioned by name 12 times in the Christian Bible. 11 of the 12 times are in the Passion narrative. That means the part of the Gospels uh, where the story of the crucifixion resurrection appear. 11 of those times are there. And not only is she there, but she's the most important figure there. She's everywhere and right in the front. Okay, This is very curious. Because the Gospels don't agree on who was at the tomb at the, res at the supposed resurrection, right? right? You know, was there two people there, according to Matthew, three according to Mark? Uh, f more than four according to Luke, or only one person according to John. But whichever book you go to, Mary Magdalene is right there. And in John, she's the one, John chapter 20. So she is the, the person. And those who know your Christian Bible are very familiar with this. This should resonate for you. But everywhere else in the Christian Bible, She's almost absent with one exception. And that's in Luke chapter 8. She appears as a companion of Jesus. And she has demons. And Jesus removes, casts out demons from her. In the ancient world, if, if someone had demons and it was cast out, they didn't know what mental illness was. They had no idea. They didn't know what psychosis was. They didn't know what neurosis was. They attributed mental illness to that someone has a devil. They just didn't know. I mean, today we're living in a time when there are medications that help people who struggle with not only neurosis, which is very, very difficult, and all its associated illnesses. Neurosis is like kind of where reality and fantasy, where fear and reality, the line between the two, is very, very blurred. And one creeps into the other. We all fantasize, we all worry, but we're able to distinguish between real concerns and ones that are not real and that's like what neurosis is. Psychosis is when people actually see and hear things that aren't there. It's called non-veridical vision or hearing. Non-veridical means a person sees something, but it's just not there. Veridical means you see something, and it's very much there. Okay, So non-veridical. I discovered this all. It means I, this all came to me when I was in Indonesia. It was in 2016, and a very famous preacher who was called uh, Peter the Great died. He was the biggest preacher in Indonesia. I don't recall what his Indonesian name is, but he, was, he would pack stadiums. And he was a fairly young man. He was in his 40s, and he suddenly just dropped dead. I don't, whatever it was, I don't know if he had a heart attack, whatever it was, he died. I think it was March of 2016. And he was really well known. A number of his congregants who repented already were in my congregation. When he died, it was like, wow. Now, what happened next is, you see, he promised his congregation that he was going to take them to Jerusalem. 
He was and give me, you know, give me your money. Um, and suddenly he died without fulfilling that, right? He's dead. And I'm telling you, the guy was in his, I think, mid late forties. And very quickly, within a week of his death, women said that Peter the Great appeared to them in a vision that we're going to continue. And it was only women, never men. And I know people will be offended by this, but it almost always is women and never men. And in fact, the visions of Mary, the vast majority of them are women, not men. Not all, but the vast majority are women and children. I don't know why this is the case. And also, I, I don't know what the statistics are, but it's really high. In the Philippines, people are seeing the Virgin Mary all over the time, and it's typically women who see the Virgin Mary. Same thing in Portugal, same thing in Brazil, same thing in Argentina. It's exactly what you'd expect people to see their favorite person. Not in Saudi Arabia, not in Kuwait. No one sees the Virgin Mary in Kuwait. For some reason, the Virgin Mary can't get into you know, she she can't get into Kuwait. United Arab Emirates won't let her in. She can only get into countries where people are already predisposed to having a vision of her for whatever reason. Like she doesn't come to me. She goes to everybody else. So when he died and suddenly in Indonesia, all these women said that he appeared, I it all came what what probably happened here is that so if what I'm saying is correct, so what is unique is I don't – the New Testament is not a true book, but you can do the forensics on this and figure out what most likely happened in my view. This is my opinion, what I think is the best explanation of what occurred here. And that is Jesus gets killed like hundreds of thousands of other Jews crucified in the first century. It was a horrible time as a Jew in the Roman Empire. Horrible, no, right? And what happens is you have a woman who the Christian Bible says had all these demons in her, and they were cast out by Jesus. All right? And, and, and then she's the one who's everywhere. Everywhere where Jesus resurrects, she's there. Like somehow she gets attached to this. Salome maybe, but Mary always. Okay, like the other Mary, maybe, but Mary, Magdalene. So I think what happened is that she's the one who claims that she had a vision of Jesus. Now, one point in her defense, in the ancient world, it was no, people talk that way. Now, if you come from a Pentecostal church, You'll know what I'm saying. People in Pentecostal churches just all the time say, you know, the Lord laid it on my heart. Jesus spoke to my heart today. And I, I want my audience to understand this, that the majority of my audiences are Christians or former Christians. So I'm not making this up because my audience knows I'm speaking about them. They know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a kind of if, if any other if you were taking a chemistry class in college and you talk that way, they would send you to a psychiatrist. But somehow in church, that kind of talk is normal. Not any church, but in particular in the Pentecostal kind of churches, although it bleeds into everywhere. Now imagine you live in the ancient world where phenomena can't be explained. You don't know what these noises mean. You don't know what a shooting star is. You don't understand what a an earthquake is. You have no one said what microbiology is. People died spontaneously, and you just didn't know why. They didn't. They didn't know what infection was. People died of their teeth more likely than anything. People didn't understand what that meant. They didn't take care of their teeth. They got infections and they died. And people go, "Why, why is that person dead?" Right? Like I'll ask you the question. If modern science did not exist, would you be alive today? Probably most of you are going, probably not. So a world full of just inexplicable death. So that's how people spoke in the ancient world. So he would be, as we would say, is psychotic. She, I think, probably was. But she didn't have to be. In the ancient world, am I saying emotional, crazy women? I am, but don't take it as a sexist thing. It just... 
just cranked up people who are overwhelmed by all the mysteries around them. And suddenly the person you really thought was a great person suddenly dies. 15 percent, 15 percent of healthy people, normal people, hallucinate. 15 percent of healthy people, not mentally ill people, hallucinate. At some point, we'll have a vision, and it almost always is one of two things. Either a, a relative, a loved one, who, or a religious figure. That's massive, okay? That's in a world where we have science, where we know why stuff happens. Well, we know why earthquakes occur and tsunamis occur. We know it's it, they're shifting uh, tectonic plates. We know it. We know it's not demons. They didn't. Okay. So I, I just want to be charitable to her. There's really a wide area of what could be going on in Mary's head. But people thought she had demons, probably meant mental illness. But what is so striking in the Christian Bible is that she's everywhere in the passion narratives. And she's the single most important figure. Most important. She's it. She's everywhere. And that says to me that this anomaly, and I apologize if it takes too long, but you know, in science, if, if, if a doctor is looking at an X-ray, an MRI, what are they looking for? They're looking for something that's abnormal, something that does a geologist looking for gold, looking for oil. They're looking for something that doesn't fit the pattern, something that stands out. So what stands out about her is that she's the person who probably was struggling with her own mental health. She is the person who says, Jesus appeared to me. And this was in the ancient world. People talk this way. They just couldn't explain sounds, noises, the stars, shooting. They didn't know what these things meant. And then that caught on. And you could see in the Gospels that, but people doubted it. And then I think that's where it expand from there. So that's why it is possible, it is possible that Mary Magdalene invented Christianity.